In this video, I'll explain the difference between the Adidas 510 Freerider Pro and the Trailcross LT. I'll also tell you about the pitfalls with budget options and why sneakers are great. Finally, I'll reveal a special type of shoe that works really well and does not break the bank. I mainly ride flats for a few reasons, and I've been through my fair share of mountain bike shoes. And here are my thoughts and recommendations for all budgets. I'm not only on my bike or my bike rides, I also do a lot of walking, filming and other activities, so clipless is not an option for me. Flats are what work best. I used to live in southern Spain and there I mostly did some light trail riding, more cross country or adventure rides than enduro, and since it can get very warm down there, I mostly use sneakers with a flat sole and that worked great for the most part, even for some downhill riding, but I don't recommend that in any way. Sneakers usually have a flat sole and from my experience most of them are grippy enough. I've owned both somewhat expensive Adidas sneakers and some cheaper ones. The difference is often the rigidity and the quality of the shoes. Regular running shoes don't work very well though, because of the sole. I haven't owned one pair that I like to bike with. Sneakers are superior. I also find running shoes have less support around this area. Maybe that varies from shoe to shoe. When I moved back to Northern Europe, I started to ride in more technical and wet terrain. And in a stress moment, just the day before a bike park visit, I got these. They're not MTB shoes, just hiker shoes. Cheap as hell, I think I got them for like 35 euros. They've been perfect. Great support and protection around here. And the sole is surprisingly grippy. Comfortable too, and they've taken a lot of abuse as you might have noticed. It was time to repeat the process, so I got these, with Gore-Tex even. It often gets wetter in the north. They've been absolutely rubbish. Great shoes when off the bike, but the sole is very slippery, and they write out dangerous to use for any type of more challenging MTB riding. Time to do the right thing and get a pair of 510s or something, so I got these. They're great, have the right look, but they're too expensive in my opinion. I mean, you get a pair of 160 euro shoes, and the first thing you do is to go through a lake of mud with them. I think since Adidas bought 510, the price went up by quite a margin, and nowadays you have to pay a hefty premium to get that famous 510 sole. If you have the budget for them, sure, they're great, but luckily there are alternatives. These ones are the Freerider Pro, which are like the go-to model from Adidas. The sole is completely flat and is very grippy. The top part is well protected both against abrasion and hits and crashes. The rigid too, and offer tons of support in either direction. Not very comfortable to walk with, they're pretty stiff. They're more like rock solid mountain bike shoes. Since I'm doing a lot of walking and filming too, I got these, just yesterday actually, so I haven't used them yet. They're designed to be more lightweight and uh, should give some extra feel as well on the pedals. At the same time, they're comfortable to walk with. They're not as stiff as the Freerider Pros, they're softer, almost like running shoes, or at least hiking shoes or trail shoes. The sole is still 510, but with sections that allow for some more grip when going both up and down a trail. That's perfect for me, who's constantly walking up and down trails to film. The downside, in my mind, is that they don't offer as much protection against hits and bad weather too. This is more of a summer shoe to be used in the dry. I think these would work very well in Spain too, actually. But I also had these a long time ago. Don't remember their exact model. They're also dedicated mountain bike shoes. And they do the same thing as the Adidas 510s. And used to be affordable, but they seem to have gone up in price too. Why are these so expensive now? I thought I would mention these as sort of a budget option, but sadly they are anything but budget nowadays. In the middle segment, there are dozens of other brands though, like Endura, some Shimano shoes, Northwave and Crank Brothers to name a few. You can definitely get very good shoes in the 50 to 100 euro range, and I don't really see the value in getting shoes like these. I got my 510s simply because I had a gift card for a shop that only carries 510s. On top of that, they were on sale, and I think you should be on the lookout for sales too when it comes to both ride concepts and 510s. Get them for 100 euros or less, not 150 or more. In this context of dedicated mountain bike shoes, are sneakers and trainers really good alternatives? Could be. I mean, back in the days, all mountain bikers rode in sneakers and trainers, right? 
but there are a couple of things that differ, dedicated mountain bike shoes from other shoes. So the first thing is the sole, which is both grippier, more dense and long lasting on the mountain bike shoes. The second thing is the level of protection of modern MTB shoes. They definitely offer a lot more protection, both on the sides and around the toe area, which I think is the main reason as why you want to go and buy proper mountain bike shoes. You can always get a good sole on a pair of sneakers, that works well enough, but you will not get good protection or support. But what if you do light trail riding in a warm country? Do you really need sturdy, sweaty and heavy mountain bike shoes then? I'll throw in a little bonus tip I stumbled across by accident. You see, when living in Spain, I started to play paddle. And the most important piece of equipment in paddle is not the racket, it's the shoes. And there are of course dedicated paddle shoes with a very particular and grippy sole. There's a layer of fine sand on the carpets and using regular trainers is very slippery. So there's a clear advantage to use shoes like these on a paddle court. They're a great match with flats too. Better than sneakers as there's a lot more support and rigidity here on the sides at least. I suspect tennis shoes are similar to padded shoes, so if you have any of those laying around, that might be a good alternative as well. I have a lot of old padded shoes laying around, and for casual riding or for doing some silly stuff for my dirt jumper, they are perfect and can be very affordable too.